Um, I've just chaired a session in high-risk disease at um, IMS 2024. Um, and one of the exciting things about this session was that we were um, showcasing the new definition for high-risk disease. There's been a working party of both IMS members and the International Working Group members who have met a few times over the last couple of years um, and have been exploring everybody's data to really try and refine the high risk. And so the high risk definition now includes patients with a 17P deletion, but also those patients with a mutation. It, then the second category is patients with a 1Q abnormality and a 1P abnormality, or indeed patients with um, a, a double hit in 1P. The third group are patients with a translocation of a 414, 1420 or 1416, but those patients also have to have an abnormality in 1Q or 1P. And then the third group is patients with beta-2M who um, have normal renal function, but their beta-2M is high above 5.5. And as I say, it's a new criteria. It's um, really exciting. It means that now we have a unified definition definition, we can utilize this in all our clinical trials, so it would be easier to determine how patients are doing with true high-risk disease, but also it's going to be helpful for us discussing with regulatory authorities, because they are obviously as keen as we are to find the most appropriate treatments for patients with high-risk disease, and maybe we could find some treatments that really make a difference. As part of the whole um, kind of session, we were very much talking about how it was important to implement this into our everyday healthcare systems. And it's quite interesting because essentially, I think what we're now agreeing is that, that fish is probably no longer good enough, that we need to have these mutations. Um, and therefore, we need to move to more of a next generation sequencing based approach. That's really common in leukemia. The leukemia docs do it all the time. And so we need to re-educate um, our molecular diet diagnostics labs to say, hey, let's move to this approach and let's start doing this in um, multiple myeloma. And I think one of the plus points for most healthcare systems is it's probably about half the cost doing it in the looking for those mutations and having some DNA based technique to look for copy number abnormalities and translocations compared to the old fish test. So that's a, a great kind of selling point when you can actually maybe save some money with the whole approach too.